Gamergate. Shit lords, shit ladies of the internet. It's been a while. Um, uh, I don't know how long it's been, it's just been a while. Uh, I never check these things before I say them. Uh, they haven't heard from me much. It's because really, honestly, uh, the stuff that they do that pisses me off now is nothing compared to the stuff they were doing that pissed me off. And there have been a lot of good measures, uh, a lot of good things being, coming out of it. Uh, several sites have declared ethical changes. Steven Totillo has declared he will no longer accept post-video game, uh, post-launch embargoes. It'd be great if he had actually had the balls to do that before a, a terrible game, uh, apparently, apparently terrible game dropped. I've heard a lot of uh, people I know online say they really enjoy it, but it's bad enough it dropped Ubisoft stock, so it's couldn't have been well received. But we're not here to talk about Assassin's Creed because I haven't played it. Um, <clears throat> we're here to talk, in general, Gamergate and Operation Skynet, which is a fucking fantastic idea. But decentralizing power really means that we don't need a whole lot of direction because we're now largely self-directing. We're, we're kind of... For, for, for being attacked by a bunch of Marxists, we're kind of acting as a single unit. Uh, not entirely. We have our own perspectives. We have our own issues. My issue is largely with uh, ethics and accountability. Most, uh, some people's eth issues are with uh, specifically uh, rad femme and journal journalism and things like that. And for me, if, you ha if, if your site's pre performing ethically, if you're disclosing your, your biases and things like that, then we'll know that your site is heavily leaning in one direction and we can avoid it. You're not going to do clickbaity articles, you know, you're not going to do the whole gamers are dead and then go, whoa, I didn't mean dead. And well, of course you didn't mean fucking dead. You're not like Jordy Tate who said, you know, <clears throat> we should bring back gas chambers for a uh, fucking uh, Gamergate. And that uh, when people called him on the Holocaust bullshit, uh, his response was, that the Holocaust was nothing compared to the women who have died under the patriarchy. That was also included in a rebuttal, so, but basically the idea is, is that... <clears throat> so, members of Gamergate, we're going to discuss a couple things today, but the first one we're going to discuss is the Scythians. You may not have heard of them, they're an obscure race, obscure, well, obscure culture. Sorry, fantasy gamer. So, race is my go-to phrase for that. But they were from the southern, uh, southeastern, southwestern Russia, southwestern Asia. Not quite in Turkey in the Middle East, <clears throat> and more into the Russian area, and they predominantly were on the steppes. Um, not a whole lot is known about them, but with recent archaeological finds in the last 10, 15 years... Uh, what we've discovered is that burials, and that's how we learn about ancient cultures. Cultures that don't leave writings behind, that don't have cities, that don't have great artistic developments, we have burials. And their burials are scattered and varied. There is no sign of any kind of trade routes or communities, so they were largely yurt hut similar to the Mongol hordes, but the reason we're talking about them is people keep saying patriarchy versus matriarchy. Basically, the argument is that under matriarchy, everything is better. <clears throat> and I'm here to sh divorce you of that notion. I'm here to give you a historical reference point that suggests that maybe a more neutral stance in re relation to gender would probably be preferable. Actual equality, not, you know, my side is right equality. The Scythians, the men were buried with the household equipment and the children. And the women were buried with the weapons and the horses. And many of the women show signs of battle, such as scarring the bones, things like that, uh, lots of chips, lots of healed injuries, whereas the men don't show that many. <clears throat> now, the current suggestion is that the Scythians are the basis for the Amazon legend from Greek mythology, that you had a race of warrior women who looks like they were horse-mounted archers, from what we can tell, and spear and uh, spear users, uh, and 
the women were the fighters and the men were the caregivers. And then one day, as far as we can tell, they just stopped burying their dead. Now, because of the area it's in and the, the political climate that's always kind of fluctuating there, of course, we haven't done a 100% pure survey. I mean, fuck, it took us how long to actually find out Troy was a real place? But, given the evidence that we have, and even assuming they had a booming culture, one day they stopped having a booming culture. At best, there's no signs of roads in that area. There's no signs of, of any kind of advanced civilization short of yurts, short of clan family and uh, non-sedentary lifestyle. So basically they were roaming bands of people who raised horses and hunted, but the women did the hunting, the women did the fighting, the women did the warring, and the men stayed home. In any kind of culture, that suggests that the women were in charge. Uh, it isn't until the modern era where people who do not put themselves in danger get to make the decisions. Uh, any kind of ancient civilization, the people who fight, the gen especially, specifically the gender who fights, the gender who lays their life on the line, is the gender that is in charge. And so the, the general consensus among our anthropologists is that the Scythians were a matriarchal society that stopped existing. But, according to these people, that can't happen. The patriarchy kills women. The patriarchy is death to women. A matriarchy would be a fucking golden age. But we have a matriarchy that shows no signs of artistic development, no signs of, of real strong cultural development, no signs of community development, no signs of, of agricultural development. We have, we have, they developed into the, the Bronze Age, still in the hunter-gatherer set, and they stayed there until they stopped existing as a society. Now maybe they got absorbed into the Cossacks, maybe they got absorbed into the Mongols, maybe they got absorbed into Turkey, maybe they moved into Greece, which is where the legends for the Amazons came from, and they became folk stories for the for them in memory of those of those fallen ancestors. Who the fuck knows? Maybe all of these things, maybe none of them. Maybe a plague wiped them out. But in the end, what we're finding is we're finding burial mounds, but no signs of houses, no signs of of structures, no walled areas, no rimmed areas, no no uh, wood hinges, no anything like that. And so the suggestion is is that it's a matriarchal society that ceased to exist. And why am I telling you this overlong, probably boring ass anthropological di anthropological dictation? Because it suggests that matriarchal societies die just as easily as matriarch as patriarchal societies. And in all honesty, in a population where all women go to war, in a small population, it reduces the chances of reproduction. Yeah, that's kind of a horrible sexist thing to say, but when you have 100 people, and 50 of them are going to die in battle this year, you can have 25 and 25 stay home. 25 of each gender, and have 25 kids next year. Or you can have 1 and 49 stay home, and 1 kid, or 49 kids. Morally, culturally, no society has ever really accepted the idea that one guy stays home and he gets to bang all the girls. But from a logistic standpoint, at least a middling is better. And that's why historically war soldiers have favored men, because we are a, we're not a resource necessary to maintain the population as much as women are. As long as some men stay behind, the population will continue. It just might bottleneck genetically. But basically, there are, two, there are two examples I know of off the top of my head of matriarchal societies. They are the Scythians and the Iroquois. The Iroquois did a decent job, but even they elected a male war chief. So when they went to war, they elected a man to be in charge, but they were run by postmenopausal women who were the heads of their household, similar to a noble council. Uh, from medieval Europe. Uh, they were women who were past their prime, who had no one left to impress. And they decided the, the way the culture ran. And they lived in relative peace. But again, when they went into conflict, 
they elected a man to handle it because, by and large, testosterone makes you aggressive. Higher levels of testosterone make you more aggressive, lower levels make you less aggressive. Men tend to have more testosterone, therefore men tend to be more aggressive. Biochemistry. But the Scythians were an inverse of that, and they ceased to be. So it's just a suggestion that if anyone says, hey, you know, well, matriarchy should win, or the patriarchy's bad, just remind them that we've had matriarchies, and they didn't work either in the end. So, moving on, nine minutes into that, for those of you who are still with me, let's talk about shills. I don't talk about them much because I don't pay attention to them. And in fact, if you look at my Twitter and my followers, I don't actually track who the fuck followed me. I just generally just follow back. My general fo Now, if you start saying shit in my feed that, that is just goddamn ridiculous, I'm going to take you out of my feed. <clears throat> so if someone follows me and I follow them back, and then I get nothing but Twitter feeds of pictures of dead babies and Holocaust jokes, uh, I, it's hit or miss. Because Holocaust... Ho I like off-color humor. I have friends who are thrilled when I get an off-color humor joke, so... But, I follow you back. So people are like, well, don't follow that. That person didn't put in Op Skynet, but they're not really in support of Gamergate. No, but they might want to hear what we have to say. So follow them. <laughs> follow them back. Let them follow you. Don't block people just because you don't think they agree with us, because that's the whole point of the block bot thing. That's the whole point of the block list, is that they don't want to hear people who disagree with them. So if someone wants to hear me who disagrees with me, by all means, hear me. And if you you want to say something I disagree with, I'm more than happy to hear you and discuss it with you. Uh, but we're going to delve into a bit of Jeff history. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm not going to get to, you know, I'm not going to explain how, the, how we got in the man suit and all. Uh, or how we decided it was only going to be three hamsters. Just moving on. Uh... At the age of 17, I actually was, uh, I joined a religion. I joined Discordianism, uh, which is nice because Discordianism doesn't require you to be non-atheist to be a member. Uh, now, since then, I have built up quite the resume for the actual application listed because you actually list the places you've been fired from. And as I've said before, I've been fired a couple times. <laughs> but uh, I am not an ordained member of, of uh, Discordianism because... You have to find one of the founders to be ordained in it. And they made it in the 50s, even if they're still around. They're hard to fucking find. But, doesn't matter. Now, I'm thrice ordained through the Universal Life Church because I lost, uh, I changed addresses or lost the emails that they had sent me, and I can't just have them send a new one, so. I'm an atheist with three ordainments, and, through Discordianism, a papacy, because every member of Discordianism is a pope. And the reason for that, the reason for that, is that they want to be in a competition. In the 1950s, they want to be in a competition. Mormonism had, had, was, was on the rise, and Mormonism, it says, and every member is a saint. What well, Discordianism wants to one-up that, they want more saints than Mormonism. So I am going to say this. I hereby declare every member of Gamergate a saint. Feel free to declare yourself saint of blank. And if there's two conflictions, then it's clearly just mis uh, misinterpretation of the texts. You're all saints. Everyone who uses Gamergate or OpSkyNet, I declare you hereby with my pow powers vested in me by Eros Esoterica and the Parth Parthio Animata Mystichood of Eros Esoterica, Pui, I hereby declare you saints. Under the auspices of Malacalypse the Elder, and whatever the fuck else you want to say, Callisti, Hail Eris, I'll hail Discordia. That said, the reason I brought up Discordianism is it has a wonderful faction, uh, faction, it has a wonderful component to it. As a religion, it has to have a devil. What its devil is, is Greyface. And Greyface is the guy who organizes your shit for you. Even when you don't want it organized, Greyface is basically just the, 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 the threat of organization. If you don't know what Discordianism is, it's a religion devoted to the, the Greek god of Chaos, Eris, uh... Uh, its symbol is the golden apple with a K mar carved in it. The K represents Callisti because she wrote Callisti on a golden apple and rolled it into a party, and that caused the Trojan War. And if you don't know that story, it's actually kind of fun. You might want to look it up. Basically, it's a story of 
the cool kids went to a party and didn't invite her because she's a problem. So she trolled them and caused the biggest war in the, in the uh, Mediterranean at the time. Anyway, they had the turkey curse. Now, the turkey curse's actual ritual is you wave your arms like a mandrake feeling up a sexy giantess while proclaiming as loudly as you can, gobble, gobble, gobble. In honor of Thanksgiving, what I propose is friends of Gamergate, shit lords and shit ladies, let's just turkey curse the shells. When you see poop and you have to, you have to draw attention to it, but you don't want to touch it, just say gobble. Just say gobble. If someone says something that's absolutely ludicrous, let's not engage them anymore. Let's just say gobble. When someone declares that the Holocaust was, was nothing compared to the deaths of millions of women over the history of mankind, just say gobble. Just say gobble. That's all we should say from now on. I know this isn't going to reach everyone, but come on. Can you imagine the articles that would drop if every time some like every time John McIntosh goes full McIntosh, there's just a whole list of Twitter tweets just saying gobble. They'd spend forever trying to figure out what it meant. It would be glorious and it would be fantastic. And it wouldn't be anarchy, it would be chaos. I got corrected on that earlier. Someone said they were an anarchist. I said I prefer Discordia because it doesn't have rule by chaos. It has rule it has occasional it, it suggests occasional chaos is, is necessary. I got corrected, anarchy isn't about chaos. Depending on who you read, I would disagree, but yes, there are schools of thought that say anarchy as, as a government is not about chaos, it's about freedom to do what you want within the confines of not fucking with other people doing what they want. Uh, it's kind of my general stance on how you behave, but knowing people, I think anarchy relies on the idea that people are good, same as communism does. They rely on the idea that people are good. People aren't good. People are self-serving. People are cruel. People are mean. People are spiteful. Humanity is strong. Humanity will overcome. Humanity will push through. Humanity creates charities and empathy and donates money to people when you're being called a fucking monster. But people suck. Let's all agree. We've met some people in our lives that we would probably have been better off not knowing. Maybe family. Maybe friends. Maybe people you really, really, really hate. But you met people in your life that when you look back after that time was done, you went, wow. What the fuck? Those are people. So are the good people. People are everything. But because of that, I don't think any kind of rule just allows everyone to do what they want in any circumstance without some kind of governing body. The problem is, is the governing body needs to be reminded of who the, who, who's actually in charge, and that's the people. Authority is the equilibrium of power and, f and, pre and privilege. We give you the power to hold over us. We can take that back. You have all the power. But you can only use the power we let you have, and that's really the problem right now with the whole NSA and shit like that. And of course, there's the Will Wheaton discussion that we should end an anonymity and anonymity for online gamers, because that's that's what's going to fix harassment. Is 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 that uh, he hates the NSA spying on people, but he would really like to be able to spy on people. Uh, Joss Whedon had a wonderful article this week about or last week about. Uh, not everyone who says they're a feminist actually has the best intentions in heart. Many people, many men who say they're feminists are just doing it because they have ulterior motives. Self-awareness there, Joss? Or none? You know, you latch hold of feminism because it's what got Buffy popular, was the, 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 the girl power idea, even though she was meant as a joke. So, yeah, of course you're latching onto feminism as a me too, me too, look! And Will, come on. Wesley. But, Movie Bob's writing more for The Escapist again, so yay. Um, yeah, I broke my hole, I'm not gonna go back, cause I like Yahtzee. But, 
uh, and more recent outrage, uh, the outrage over the guy's shirt, uh, fucking grow the fuck up. If you're outraged about a shirt someone wore on TV that a friend made them, grow the fuck up. It's as simple as that. Just grow the fuck up. We're not here to erase you. None of us are your mother or your father. Grow the fuck up. If you're offended by something I've said, grow the fuck up. You're going to be offended by things in your life. That's part of fucking life. Uh, I saw one fucking uh, demotivational. It's like, is, uh, Islamic terrorist blows up a church. Can't say Islamics are bad. Christian says uh, God in public and, you know, everyone hates on him. I hate both. Uh, Halloween. Halloween. My son had a good Halloween. Went to like seven houses and said, I'm, I'm done. Uh, but it's about the costume for him. He got to be Iron Man. But my son's school is right next to a church. As soon as they let the kids out, motherfuckers on a loudspeaker telling everyone it's the devil's holiday to, to go trick-or-treating is to hold is to walk hand in hand with Satan uh, for those kids to, to tell their parents no to Halloween for them not to give in to demonic uh, things and I have two issues with that one the first issue you're, you're a fucking asshole you are preaching to kindergartners and first graders and second graders whose parents aren't there to answer their questions. You're a fucking asshole. To me, that's tantamount to showing up in a white van with candy and asking for if kids want to ride home. You're a scumbag, you're deplorable, and I hope to fucking God there's a hell for you to burn in. Now, I'll be in the next lake over as an atheist, but... And the other issue I have is, if you're gonna be a fire and brimstone preacher, be a fire and brimstone preacher. I'm from the fucking south. You know, you don't you don't say hellfire calmly. You don't and the devil was this. You, you get into it, man. You want people passionate about what you're preaching, especially when you're preaching be afraid because God's gonna spank you. Be passionate as passionate as you want them to be. And it was so pathetic. It was so it was just, you know, and the devil is bad. What? I actually was more offended at the lack of, of effort put in than I was at the whole preaching. But the preaching pissed me off. I'm for, for Christians who, who see this. I have no issue with your faith in church, in your house, or in conversation. But. But. My son gets to decide to save his soul when he grows up. That's on him. I will sit down and discuss with him every religion he wants to look at. I will help him read the texts. I will help him interpret the texts as best in my ability. And if I can't, I will send him to a temple that will. I don't believe people shouldn't be allowed to have religion. But if you are offended by the idea that I think you're a prick, for preaching to children who do not have guardians around, who can talk to them about religion, because teachers can't, then grow the fuck up. So, in closing, remember Scythians, because <laughs> no one else did for a long time. Uh, remember to call out people when they say the uh, patriarchy is inherently bad. Remember to call out People give examples of good matriarchies because there have been matriarchies in history. They just tend to not work terribly well. The Iroquois worked fantastically, but they're, they're an exception, not a rule. And remember, when you see someone on the line say something so stupid that you have to post something, or so ludicrous, or so inflammatory, someone who's clearly baiting for harassment, Someone who's clearly trying to, to get people mad at them. And you want to say something, but you can't. It's poop, and you know it's poop, and you shouldn't touch the poop. Remember, just say gobble. 
you will change that person's day. I also think we need to organize a Jake day, but that's, that's another time. So in closing, like I just said, gobble, and let's have some fun with it. Because you know what? We're winning. Because we're not being silent. Up Skylight basically ends their ability to silence us unless Twitter basically wants to cut off publicly thousands of people. So we're winning. You can't silence all of us. We're not going anywhere until you change your fucking tune, journos. And for the people in journalism, uh, Alistair Pensoff, Laura, uh, Leanna Kars, uh, Karner, Eric Kane, for you, uh, Zen of Design, for those of you who are saying that, well, we're dogpiling on journalists when we should be, no. The journalists are where it stops. Journalists and editors, if they were doing their jobs as consumer advocates and reporters, then Gamergate wouldn't have to exist. Instead, they've decided to align themselves with political ideologies, and so, to that I say, gobble. <laughs>